The sky was dark, and the moonlight secretly sprinkled on a double-story house through the clouds. The densely packed ivy had traces of being cleaned, but the person who did so must have given up soon the ivy stretched to the roof, and then hung down to the second floor. The window on the second floor of the bungalow had the curtains drawn, revealing a faint light. I, Anna Somonas Lawrence, the lucky one who has been reborn, the peep at the seam of fate, determined to live well in this fresh world. I strive to be an ordinary melon eater who follows the great the footsteps of most people hide in dark corners, watching the vicissitudes of the world indifferently. A small, cozy room pale blue wallpaper and a thick brown quilt on a low bed. The foot of the bed was facing the door, and beside the door was a large wooden cabinet that was half opened it was filled with dense clothes, which were not neatly arranged, and some of the pants had socks with strange patterns hidden in them. The scent of ink fills the air. Sitting at the desk by the side of the bed near the window, our protagonist, Miss Anna, is thinking, writing and drawing on a small pink notebook with a pen. On the wooden study chair, Anna was not honest. Her little feet in rabbit patterned stockings were shaking wildly on the dark blue thick carpet. A few soft knocks sounded on the door, Baby Anna, it's time to eat. Okay Mom, come right away. Anna neatly covered the pen, threw the diary under the bed, kicked away the dolls and small leather school bags in the way, almost tripped over the toy box in the way. One day I have to get rid of these toys in the way. Anna opened the door. A beautiful woman with brown curly hair stood at the door, her dark green eyes couldn't hide her tiredness and worry. This beauty is Lena Lawrence, a poor, ordinary and strong, respectable lady, and also Anna's mother. Seeing her daughter who was in a good mood, Liana was obviously relieved, Anna, I don't recommend that you lock yourself in your room all day, maybe you can go out for a while after dinner. After a pause, Lena pursed her lips, the doctor said that playing with your peers will help restore your, condition. I'm sorry I didn't find out sooner, I always thought you were just a little introverted. Earlier, Lena retrieved Anna's psychological report from the psychiatrist and the report showed that Anna had mild depression. The beauty Lina hugged Anna tightly, My baby, you must be as happy as you are now. Wow! Wow! A mother's monologue was interrupted by a hurried cry. Lina panicked for a moment, but quickly regained her confidence. She let go of Anna's instructions and said, Anna, let's go to dinner, I'll go see your brother, poor A.I. Wen must have wet his pants again. Yes. Mother. Anna quickly walked down the old stairs. Despite the carpet, the old stairs let out an overwhelmed sigh. T. Nine-year-old, 1.4 meters tall, with a mole on her left earlobe, Anna went straight to the dining table. The resident of the storage room under the stairs snow, a white kitten, was obviously disturbed by the sigh of the old Mr. Staircase, and was dissatisfied. He ran out of the nest and ran towards the dining table. One person and one cat stared at each other with big eyes and small eyes. This silent battle ended when Anna inserted a small meatball into the cat's nose bowl, and Anna was defeated again. Or that Anna has never won such a human cat battle. Snow the cat's twinkling twinkling, revealing despicable blue pupils, which are the eyes of the devil although it is very cute. After finishing the last piece of meatball, Anna felt a little lost. If in the past, this time can be used to tick-tock, but now in 1988, the TV was showing strange doll cartoons, the fire in the fireplace was crackling, and the cat snow had run to the fireplace. Come on! Although the whole scene lacks an old man in a thick cotton padded coat sitting on a rocking chair, it is peaceful enough, or rather boring. Hey, a discordant voice came from the ear. Yu Yu reading www.yuyuganchu. Calm Anna turned her head and saw the beauty Lena walked into the living room with her little brother A.I. Wen. A.I. Wen was shaking around with a small pacifier in his hand, and his mouth kept making a quack sound. Frog Prince, poof! Anna simply laughed at her cute little brother in her heart, but she suddenly saw that there seemed to be a shiny thing on A.I. Wen's head. Anna rubbed her eyes, and after a closer look, there was nothing there. 
A.I. Wen was holding his head stupidly, as if trying to put a pacifier on his head. Anna, the rain has stopped outside, why don't you go out and play for a while? Liana put A.I. Wen on the children's chair beside the dining table, and took the apron hanging from the refrigerator to clean up the table. Snow may also want to go out for a walk. Anna's eyes were locked on the cat dozing by the fireplace, and she recalled the small meatballs that got into the cat's mouth. Good beauty, Lena, I'm going out for a cat walk. Beautiful Lena. I'm the promised mother. Anna grabbed the cat snow, walked to the door, took off the cat leash, and quickly tied the cat snow. Ignoring the reluctant expression on the stupid cat's face, Anna put on her dark brown Ugg and picked up the woolen coat on the small sofa. I am leaving. Pay attention to safety, Liana reached out and found that Anna's dress was warm and comfortable, and nodded with satisfaction, don't go too far. It is good the door slammed, and Lena just finished washing the dishes, took off her apron, hugged A.I. Wen, and walked to the dining table. Hey. What is this? Of course it wasn't the silly pacifier in A.I. Wen's hand. Lena took out a small ornament from A.I. Wen's hat where did it come from? Lena put the ornament in the palm of her hand, the crown. In Surrey, in the southwest corner of the city of London, there is a small whinging area, where Anna lives, 8 Privet Road. The location of the house is not very good. There is a small social park nearby that is always noisy. But the beauty Liana liked it so much that she bought the house with all the money. After I got married to Country M, I almost forgot what this social park looks like. Buying a house with full price is not a popular trend these days, especially for such an old house, some neighbors even secretly ridiculed Lina for being stupid and rich. But half of them are right, it is indeed more money. Lina, a best-selling fantasy novelist is the sole beneficiary of her husband's accident insurance. It has been a year since Anna transmigrated into this little girl's body. Compared with the saying that the soul occupies someone else's body, the word exchange is more accurate, because when the two strayed into the crack of time and space, their wishes were want a different life. The little girl took over the body of Anna's eldest lady with heart disease, whose parents died early and who had huge fortune. Anna took over the body of the little girl whose father died unexpectedly, was bullied in American schools and suffered from depression, but dared not tell her mother's body. It sounds like this exchange is not fair to the little girl, but her will is very strong. Anna later speculated that it might be because the little girl suffered the double blow of her father's death and school violence. Her mother, Lena, had to take care of the younger children. At the same time, she was busy with work and did not care for her in time. She thought that her mother liked her younger brother more, and finally she was completely cold. Mind. The two reached an agreement that Anna would protect the family in place of the little girl, and the little girl would go to the future to enjoy a better life. Now Anna is very satisfied with her healthy body. Although she is a little thinner, she can't help feeling excited when her heart is beating strongly. A familiar figure appeared not far away, and Anna walked over quickly. It was a not-so-tall lady, with grey hair, a hairnet, a pale pink fleece robe that looked like pyjamas, and a pair of thick-soled cotton slippers a cat lover who lived on Wisteria Road, Ms. Arabella Fig. Good evening, Mrs. Fig. Anna greeted. Mrs. Fig tilted her head, panting heavily, looking over the wooden fence covered with green plants, staring at the small garden of a house, eagerly looking for something. Anna leaned over to take a look. Except for a glass greenhouse, a swing, and a children's climbing frame, there was nothing worth noticing in the garden. It was well kept. Anna. Mrs. Fig was a little surprised. She didn't expect to meet an acquaintance here, but she quickly calmed down, Good evening dear. Looking at Mrs. Fige's dress, Anna was a little surprised a decent English lady would not go out in her pajamas at night. Mrs. Fig, are you looking for cats? I can help you if you need them. Mrs. Fig's house has a lot of cats, so Anna guessed that the cat ran away. Oh, thank you dear, my cat is fine, I just, came out for a walk. 
Mrs. Fig frowned as if she suddenly realized that her dress was a bit inappropriate. Maybe Anna didn't intend to explore what is it like for a middle-aged woman in her pajamas to walk through two blocks late at night so she nodded lightly, OK, Mrs. Fig, then I'm going to walk the cat, bye. Goodbye child. Fig watched Anna walk around the corner, glanced at the garden again, sighed, and turned away. If you are not active in eating melons, you have problems with your mind. Anna's head pops out of the corner so what is MRS Fig looking at? Can't wait to return to the position just now, after observing for a long time, Anna couldn't see anything except that the garden was very tidy. Walking to the main entrance of the small house, this is a house of the same type as his own, with the house number number 4 Privet Road. Anna checked the mailbox by the way, there was a letter stuck in the mailbox Vernon Disley. Not impressed. In fact, this is of course. It has only been almost a month since I moved here. I applied for a school transfer at a community primary school, and I have to wait for the next semester to go to class. Now, it is only November. Apart from meeting Mrs. Feige at the pet store, Anna, few known neighbors. Of course, it may also be the reason why Anna doesn't like to go out in winter. After all, Lena got acquainted with the neighbors in just one week after moving in. Yesterday, a woman with a long neck and golden wool rolls came to deliver a pie. Although Anna has not seen this woman, what is certain is that her craftsmanship must not be very good. The bottom of the pie was huddled together. God knows how Anna finished it. Baby Anna, we can't live up to the kindness of others. I know, I know, the kind beauty Liana. Seeing that there was no melon to eat, Anna decided to walk the cat elsewhere and pulled the cat leash, which attracted the dissatisfied Meow Meow. Snow lay on the ground, unwilling to move. Benefits for newbies, the melon-eating radar is activated, and it is being detected, ugh. Ah ah ah. Kaka. There was a sound from the door of Disley's house, someone was using a key to unlock it. Scanning success. Pending melon found, system prompt, complete a melon eating task, unlock other functions of the system, a slender blonde woman came out from behind the door, blinking with a pair of light colored eyes, she saw Anna, and when her eyes moved to snow, the cat that Anna was holding, she frowned, perhaps a little exaggerated, but Anna has to say that her gaze is so uncomfortable, it feels like a magnifying glass dedicated to finding faults in you. Hey. You. The woman walked towards Anna. Oh. Anna was amazed. Her neck was almost twice as long as a normal person's. Wearing a low neck pajamas made the length of her neck stand out. She could see that she was trembling a little. A coat with curly blonde hair draped limply at the sides. Oh, wool rolls, isn't yesterday's pie her craft? Oh. I'm sorry to bother you. Madam. I just passed by with my cat. Intuition told Anna that this long-necked woman had melons on her body. Seeing that Anna had a good attitude, Long Neck swallowed the harsh words that she was about to say, and strode forward with a scrutinizing gaze. When Anna exclaimed what a long neck, Mrs. Long Neck was also looking at Anna. Let's see, let's see, where did the poor come from looking at the expensive swan necklace on Anna's neck, and the decent woolen coat on her body, Wild boy, it's a frailty compared to our Dudleys, look at the thin body. The dark green eyes look like tattered marbles, and the brown curls are a nightmare and scary. Relax Petunia, you can handle her, you are the best. Mrs. Penny with long neck, you you reading www.uuganshu.com raised a confident smile, although the cold made her look nondescript, this, little friend, your cat didn't urinate by my mailbox, right? Oh, I believe cats won't solve problems on someone else's mailbox pole. Snow is very polite and won't enclosure. Anna answered the question as innocently as possible, hoping to get more useful information. Are you Ms. Disley? The pie you brought yesterday was delicious. Oh. Is that so? You're the Lawrence's child? Anna, right? I don't mind if you call me Ms. Petunia. The expression on Petunia's face was much more sincere, 
probably because she knew that the Lawrence's mistress was a newly lost husband poor man, there is nothing to be jealous of, even the green eyes that feel like Anna's glass marbles are cute. Okay, Miss Penny, it's already so late, I'll visit again another day. Anna estimated that the time was almost up, and when she went back later, Lena was going to talk again. She was going to leave and eat melons next time. Okay, Miss Petunia seemed to like such a daily conversation, welcome next time. A cold wind blew, and Petunia's wool quivered in the air. Poof! A wig giraffe shivering in the cold wind. Hey! Anna felt that she had hallucinations. Was Mrs. Petunia's neck stretched just now? Although it was long enough, that one shot just now really broke through the sky. What happened? Is it my system? Anna was a little nervous. Penny clutched her neck in a panic, and yelled angrily at the open door of the bungalow, Harry. In the storage room under the stairs, a head that had been sticking out all the time quickly shrank back. Anna looked confused in the cold wind, Harry? The gourd quests have been discovered, the boy who lives in distress. In fact, Anna always thought that she just came to the same world earlier. Unexpectedly, this time, she came directly to the magical world. High dimensional for low dimensional, sick for no sick, fair trade. After Ms. Penny yelled at Harry, she realized that there was a muggle like Anna next to her. For a while, Penny was like a normal person and didn't know what to say. Fortunately, Anna reacted and showed a confused look, what happened? God, I'm so sleepy ma'am, I have to go back to rest as soon as possible. Mrs. Petunia had panic on her face, and quickly answered, Yes child, it's so late, you are welcome next time, I will introduce my best Dada baby to you. After the first delivery, he ran to the house with his slippers, and before closing the door vigorously, he left Anna a cautious and kind smile. Anna squatted down and picked up Mr. Snow on the ground walking towards the home while following the cat. Until she couldn't see number 4 Privet Road, Anna ran wildly, with a crazy and twisted expression on her face. She was laughing wildly usually, this kind of expression will appear on the faces of young people who hit CP, or on the faces of people attending gossip parties. It generally marks a sharp surge of adrenaline and a constant flow of inner satisfaction. But the Ministry of Magic doesn't really like to see little wizards make such an expression, because it usually means a magical riot. Anna didn't notice anything unusual, she was enjoying the joy of eating melons and running wild. She never thought to stop and admire the roadside scenery those melon lamps and melon chairs that she turned into melons. Mrs. Fig was on her way home, looking preoccupied. The tragic childhood of the Savior Potter made Mrs. Fig choked up. Suddenly an orange cat with long ears jumped out of the grass, jumped up and down beside Mrs. Fig, bit Mrs. Fig's slippers, and ran back in the direction from which it came kick. Mrs. Fig's expression gradually became heavy, and she turned and ran with the kick. The kick was sent to monitor the accident near Potter. Now she ran in such a hurry, if something happened to Potter, how should she explain to Dumbledore? At this time, the great accident maker, Anna, had already arrived home. When she turned around and closed the door, she seemed to see a green patch, but Anna didn't care too much it was time to discover the system. Anna rubbed the cat's nose paws on the carpet, then put Mr. Cat aside to break free from the ug on her feet. Mom. I'm back. Anna greeted the living room, but there was no unexpected response. What about people? Anna stopped walking upstairs leaned on the stair railing and looked towards the living room, no one? Anna ran to the living room, only to see the cat snow stretched out in front of the fireplace. Did you fall asleep? Anna is getting ready to go upstairs to find out. Zitsizi. The doorbell rang. Anna looked sideways at the ancient clock in the corner of the living room. It was 9.40. I'm back so late. Anna walked to the door. Who could it be so late? Lena, did they go out? There were no cat eyes on the door. Anna lay on the carpet and opened a small door under the door where newspapers were placed. 
Kin see a pair of old men's leather shoes, it feels like they have been worn for a century. Anna stood up and silently locked the door. Who are you? Anna pretended to be in a low voice. Hello ma'am. I think your child may be in trouble. The Ministry of Magic has just detected a magical riot around here, um, something unusual has happened, is she okay? The male voice was a little eager, if her condition is very bad we can provide treatment right away, can you open the door, ma'am? Anna scratched her chin, well no. I mean, my daughter is fine, she's fine. Madam, we are not malicious. The man was obviously anxious and interrupted Anna's words, we know this is hard to accept, but the magic violence will cause great harm to the body of the little wizard, and it will also harm the surrounding muggles. Sorry, it will also cause great harm to those around you. The man's voice earnestly, please open the door. My God! Lina's voice came out of the door, magic riot. Baby! Are you okay? Hearing Lina's voice, Anna quickly opened the door, and what she saw was an unfamiliar red-haired middle-aged man with an anxious expression. As an Englishman, he was already a little bald, wearing a pair of gold-rimmed glasses and a thin body. Tall and thin this is Mr. Weasley. Anna thought of it almost instantly. I'm fine. I'm fine. Indeed, Anna couldn't be better now, with ruddy skin, dark green eyes, and a sweet smile on her face. Oh. Anna. Must be terrified, right? Lina embraced Anna, why are you still giggling? Anna thinks that Lina knows what magic violence is I'm sorry ma'am, but I have to interrupt, we have to take your child to the hospital for a checkup. Arthur Weasley was a little puzzled the detection of magic riots seldom went wrong, and those street lamp chairs that turned into melons did exist, but Anna looked normal. Yes. Let's go. Two. St. Mungo, right? This gentleman. Liana turned around and pulled the stroller over, how do we get there? Apparition. Oh. Madam, you can call me Arthur. Yes, we can apparate over there. Forgive me, are you a wizard? Arthur didn't feel a trace of magic in Lena, and he already had some guesses in his heart that this lady might be a squib. No. I should just be what you call a muggle, but my grandfather was a wizard, and I was raised by my grandfather. Lena didn't want to say more, she skipped the topic, my name is Lena Lawrence, you can call me Lena, Mr. Arthur, what are we going to do now? Anna frantically searched her mind for the memories the little girl gave her, but there was no topic about wizards, magic, nor any wizard great-grandfather. Wait a minute the little girl's memory of being violently abused at the school in Country M is a little vague. I don't know what happened. The group of children and the little girl all appeared in the hospital. Mr. Arthur really didn't have much curiosity about other people's privacy, he glanced at the stroller with Ivan's child, Ms. Liana, babies are not suitable for reshaping, I suggest we can sit for a while. What an amazing vehicle. Broom. Flying carpet? Pumpkin carriage? Anna interjected excitedly. This was her first official contact with the magical world in every sense. Oh. Little lady, of course not these common means of transport, although pumpkin carriages are not very common, Arthur gestured, of course this magical means of transport is the car. The great invention of muggles. Smile, it's amazing. You really shouldn't have high expectations for Mr. Weasley's magic. Anna looked helpless at the ordinary blue Ford sedan in front of her, but Liana agreed, it's really a great invention. Before that, please take the baby out, I need to give the stroller a shrink quickly. Arthur took out his wand and tapped on the stroller, and the stroller shrank at a speed visible to the naked eye. Can people shrink too? It's like Alice shrinks when she eats a cookie. Anna was very surprised when she saw the magic of using a wand for the first time. Arthur frowned, if there were such biscuits, I would have to start working. It is a very dangerous thing to shrink people, especially muggles, which is a violation of secrecy laws. By the way, mind you, 
it's part of my job to recycle magical items that flow into the muggle world. Oh. No, it's just a fairy tale, Anna tried to explain. That's really a scary fairy tale. Most fairy tales in the wizarding world are based on real events. I hope Miss Alice is okay, but I have to say that muggle ideas and things are very interesting. Arthur waved his wand to let the baby the car is in the passenger seat. Get on the bus, passengers, we have to leave soon. Kook. A.I. Wen, who was held in Lina's arms, echoed with face. In a Ford car. Anna arrived at St. Mungo's, an old-fashioned red brick building on an old street, without magic at all. It's not hard to see that it was originally a department store, with a dusty sign that said Dao Taoko, Limited, and a big sign closed for renovation on the wooden door. We're here, Arthur Weasley walked to the shop window, which was filled with dummies of strange shapes. Arthur put his wand against the glass and said to the dummy, I want to bring magic power. The rioting little wizard is being treated. He then nodded slightly and motioned everyone to follow, let's go. It was almost midnight, and there was no one on the street. Arthur passed through the window first, and disappeared into the window. Lina hugged A.I. Wen and took Anna through the window together, and came to a relatively spacious room. There seemed to be no windows in the room, but the air was very well ventilated. What stood out was a desk with the words Inquiry Desk, and behind it sat a rich, blonde lady who seemed to get along well. Arthur walked to the information desk, oh. Hello Mr. Arthur, I'm glad to serve you. Do you remember why you came here? The blonde lady saw Arthur and took out a pen to prepare a record. Ah? I'm fine, ma'am. I haven't been hit by the forgetting charm. This time it's a little wizard with a magical riot. Then you must be in a hurry. The magic violence treatment room is on the fifth floor, just to the right of the magic damage department lounge. The blonde lady interrupted Arthur and pointed out the direction quickly. After seeing the lively Anna, her eyes were obviously bright got a little suspicious. Anna was looking around. Ordinary green plants, ordinary elevators, ordinary lounge chairs, and of course there were also extraordinary ones. Just now, the room in the corridor on the right made a loud noise, and a green light flashed. Arthur noticed Anna's gaze, this floor is the artifact accident section, and some magic items have problems. For example, if the cauldron blows up, it will come here, and our muggle supplies department will sometimes come here to recover magic problems. Muggle items, oh. When it comes to muggles, it's simply someone who doesn't have the talent for magic. Arthur Weasley raised his head, Mrs. Lena, please take your baby to the sixth floor and wait for a while, there is a lounge, we can send you back when we confirm that there is no problem, he added, of course, I personally don't think it's a big problem. Okay, thank you, Mr. Arthur, Lena stepped on the elevator and told Anna before the elevator closed, baby. Mommy is always here, don't be afraid. Anna made an okay gesture and followed Arthur to the other elevator, uh. Should I call you? Arthur was a little embarrassed. After chatting for so long, he realized that he still didn't know the name of this little girl. You can call me Anna, Mr. Arthur. Anna suggested understandingly. Miss Anna, do you remember what caused your magical riot? Arthur took Anna into the elevator and pressed the button on the fifth floor, did you see something somewhere? Anna was observing the elevator. She wondered if the elevator that ran on electricity was very ordinary. There were mirrors on the left and right sides of the box, and a wand and leg bones crossed the icon on the back. Speaking of which, Arthur Weasley seems to be a member of the Order of the Phoenix? Could it be guessing that I saw something outside Harry Potter's house that sparked the magic riot? I didn't see anything, oh. It's just that when I was chatting with the neighbor's wife, I suddenly saw that her neck became longer. Anna pretended to be embarrassed, I was thinking about something, and suddenly her neck became very long. Break through the sky, like a giraffe. Pfft, Arthur saw Mrs. Petunia, indeed, then you were frightened? Just left. Yes, 
Anna didn't mention that she saw Harry Potter stick out his little head from the storage room. Ding Arthur and Anna got off the elevator and passed a cozy looking room with a fireplace and a bean paste sofa. This is the lounge. You can play here for a while. I'll go to the therapist, but I think they just took over a poor wizard who was cursed. It should take a while. I don't mind, don't worry, in fact, I don't think there is any problem with me, Anna helplessly spread her hands. Arthur left, and Anna sat on the side of the bean paste sofa by the fireplace that wasn't sunken. A little boy was bounced from a depression and rolled onto the carpet. She seemed to be sleeping soundly, with a big bag hanging on her head, a little tear stains in the corners of her eyes, and snot on her face. In the middle of the night. Benefits for newbies, the meloneating radar is activated, and the detection is in progress. Found melons to be determined Anna poked her finger at the sleeping boy without hesitation, wake up, child, wake up. The boy opened his eyes and looked a little confused. He had brown hair, a round face, and a frown. He felt that he had a deep hatred with the world. Well, you look as old as me, the boy hadn't woken up yet, so you can't call me a child. The boy was dazedly entangled in strange questions. Anna refused to accept, how old are you? Eight years old. I'm older than you, I can call you child, I'm Anna, what's your name? The boy nodded and seemed to agree with Anna's statement, Neville Longbottom, you can call me Neville, why am I here? Tongwa Quest, crying boy found, hint, other functions of the system have not been unlocked yet, Neville. Anna took a few more glances at the boy. Are you under the oblivion charm? Anna used the words she just heard from the blonde lady, but it was clear that Neville might have come to visit his parents and fell asleep here. It was mentioned in the previous Harry Potter books that Neville's parents were caught and tortured by the Death Eaters, and the four Death Eaters used the crucifixion to torture Neville's parents to madness they are now living in St. Mungo's to receive treat. Hearing the words forgetting curse, Neville frowned, and the chubby brow squeezed out the words, Oh no, maybe, um I did get the forgetting curse, but this time I'm here. Neville suddenly reacted, I'm here to visit my parents. Merlin's beard. When is this going to happen? It's almost eleven o'clock, Anna added, watching Neville jump in a hurry, maybe it's almost twelve o'clock, I'm not sure. Neville looked at Anna with a look that was not too big of a problem. He didn't know where the courage came from. Maybe this was one of the reasons why he was assigned to Greyfinder. Anna. Please help me. He flinched, perhaps a little regretful what could a little girl about his age do? But they have already asked, what should I do? Tongwa mission crying boy, late night hospital, crying boy since he woke him up, he has to take responsibility. He asks you for help, help him find grandma. Task reward, unknown, complete the novice task, open the system function. Hey! Neville shook Anna's hand because Anna had been staring at a blank wall for a while, and Neville was a little anxious. Of course, Neville couldn't see the system screen that appeared in front of Anna's eyes. If he could see it, he would probably be like Anna, trying his best to read the small words in the place with strong contrast. Of course he couldn't read it, because the system Chinese is displayed on the panel. Did you come alone, Neville? No. And my grandma? But I didn't see her, do you think she has already gone back? Did she want to leave me? Neville scared himself, looking a little anxious. She showed that she wanted to leave you. Anna thought that Neville's grandma was an old lady who loved Neville very much and was strict with Neville. No, although grandma is very strict, she shouldn't do this. I used to get lost, and she would use the flying spell to call me back which is a somewhat complicated spell to retrieve lost items. An Away pinched the corner of his clothes, probably. Then when did you come here with Grandma? Anna was going to figure out what happened first. In the evening, I'll be here after dinner. Then do you remember when you fell asleep here? Neville scratched his hair, I was done visiting my parents by that time, 
and Grandma went to say something to the therapist, and I sat on the sofa, and then I fell asleep? Maybe? I don't remember how I fell asleep, if you want to know. This way. Neville's grandma should find out that Neville is missing, and use the flying curse to find him back. What's the matter with the bag on your head? Neville touched the bag on his head, looking at Anna with some doubts and some grievances. Anna raised her hands in surrender, I didn't do anything. Observing that there was some grey powder on Neville's head, Anna walked to where Neville was sitting and looked up at the ceiling. Neville. I guess your grandma was upstairs. How do you know? Anna looked at Neville sympathetically, the bag on your head should be the effect of your grandma using the flying charm upstairs, Anna pointed to the ash drop ceiling, it just hit there, I guess you fainted. Neville swallowed and touched the bag on his head with lingering fears. I suggest you go to the sixth floor to see, maybe your grandma hasn't left yet. What about you? Do you want to go with me? Neville hoped that Anna, who seemed reliable, could be with him. But Anna refused, I just had a magic riot, I have to wait here for inspection and can't walk around. Magic riot. My god. But you look, um, fine. Yes, I really don't feel anything, just leave me alone, go to the sixth floor, child, come down to find me if you can't find grandma. Anna estimated that she should be ready for the examination soon. Okay. I wish you good health. Neville took the elevator to the sixth floor with a worried look. Anna sat on the bean paste sofa, and a few minutes later, Arthur Weasley came over with a short-haired lady. Anna, are you feeling okay? This is Ms. Daisy, the therapist. Daisy looked at Anna up and down, to be honest, this really doesn't look like a child who just experienced a magical violence. Hello. Ms. Daisy. Anna greeted politely. Hello dear, we're going to give you a comprehensive inspection, come with me. Diane nodded to Arthur and took Anna to a seemingly ordinary room. Please sit on the wooden chair and straighten your arms. Anna sat on the wooden chair against the wall in the room, straightened her arms, and looked around. A desk for the therapist with some chocolate cockroaches on the table, the movable chair seems to have a mind of its own and is preventing Daisy from putting Anna's coat on it. The large file cabinet drawers were opening and closing by themselves, and the small wooden chair sitting under Anna's buttocks Anna always felt the urge to run. This is magic. Darling, how do you feel? Daisy tapped the wand on Anna's shoulder, do you feel powerless here? Anna shook her head, feeling that there has never been a more amazing time than now. Every time Daisy's wand moved to a place, there was a smooth feeling there like a sneeze had finally come out. Daisy frowned, and finally moved her wand to Anna's heart, Anna, do you feel weak now? No, Miss Daisy, I've never felt better. Daisy's wand pointed at Anna's heart, and a warm feeling surrounded Anna. Anna, who had suffered from heart disease, was grateful to experience such joy. That's so weird. The flow of magic power is too fast and the capacity is too large, it means that you have a magic power riot. Daisy looked at Anna in surprise. Anna didn't understand why this was so surprising, yes, they all said that my magic power was violent. No 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 kid, you don't understand the seriousness of magical riots, wizards are like, um. Muggle world can transmit electricity, um. Electric wire. Yes. Wires. We wizards can use the magic that exists, but there are limitations. We need to practice and gradually improve. Adult wizards can control their magic flow very well, while young wizards can't control their magic when they are emotionally unstable. Traffic, like a wire burn in St. Mungo's not too long ago. Does St. Mungo's Hospital use electricity? Oh dear, that's not the point, but yes, St. Mungo's does use electricity and like Muggle Street, we also pay electricity bills every month, although we always, back to the point, the magic of little wizards riots have a high chance of losing their ability to channel magic, just like burning wires. Anna frowned, then I lost the ability to guide magic. 
Daisy waved her wand and let the chocolate cockroaches float over on the table, no, this is the strange place, Daisy took a cockroach handed to Anna, you have no problem. Holding the cockroach that Daisy handed to her, Anna walked out of the treatment room in a trance, full of Daisy's sudden enthusiasm Anna. Trust me. You will definitely become a great wizard. Sign me first. Name. So Anna wrote her name with the quill pen provided by Daisy, and because she was not used to quill pen, Anna wrote her name very ugly. Arthur Weasley saw Anna come out, Anna. How are you? Are you okay? I'm fine, and Miss Daisy said I don't have any problems. Bronze Melon Mission, Crying Boy, Rewards Completed, Reaction Plus 20, Complete the First Melon Eating Mission, The System Function is Enabled It seems that Neville has found his grandma. Anna rubbed the cockroach chocolate into her mouth, her eyes widened slightly in surprise at how good it tasted. There was a big smile on Weasley's face, I knew it. He patted Anna on the shoulder, I'd love to chat with you about those muggle geniuses. Incredible inventions. But it's too late now, I have to take you to Madame Lena. Anna and Weasley stepped into the elevator. If you have any questions, you can write to me with the owl and tell the owl to send it to the burrow, oh oh oh. I almost forgot. Weasley looked at Anna, if you in need of a heroic owl. Go to the Leaky Cauldron in Charing Cross, London, and I think Old Tom will be delighted to show the way for the new little wizard. Girls' Fantasy Journey, the gate to the fantasy world is slowly opening, how could a qualified little wizard not go to Diagon Alley? Find your way into Diagon Alley and go on a magical journey. Reward, Memory Plus 50 Thank you, Mr. Arthur, I believe I will write to you, Anna almost missed writing three words of interest on her face Diagon Alley. A street full of magic. And an owl. Walking out of the elevator door, facing the metal wall decoration where the leg bones and the wand cross, you can see that the wand is shaking slightly. Anna followed behind Arthur, and the two walked in around the curtain on the left. Slice leather shoes squeaked on the wooden floor. Anna. How's it going? Are you okay? Lina heard the noise, stopped talking with an old lady and hurriedly got up to greet Anna. Mrs. Lena, Anna is fine, you have to trust St. Mungo's technology, after all, the whole of London is like this. Miss Lawrence, I'm glad you're all right, the old Mrs. Neville got up and greeted Anna very gracefully, I'm Neville's grandmother, you can call me Mrs. Longbottom, I'm very grateful for you to point the way to my grandson, otherwise my poor grandson may have to cry until the whole building knows. She paused at this point, I had to talk to the main therapist. Don't mind ma'am, I'm glad to help Neville. It seemed that Neville's parents' condition was not very optimistic. Anna stuck her head out and glanced at Neville who was hiding behind her grandmother. Neville gave her a timid smile. Liana picked up A.I. Wen who was playing on the carpet, and A.I. Wen struggled dissatisfiedly, then I won't bother you, Mrs. Longbottom. I am very grateful for your comfort just now, I have to take Anna back, and now is the time. It's too late. After a few goodbyes, Weasley took Anna and Lena back to 8 Privet Drive in the same Ford sedan. Arthur sighed at the wisdom of muggles all the way, from batteries to electric lights, he was very excited and curious how muggles without magic did those things, it's wonderful. What a genius, muggles have come up with how many lives without magic. Way. At the door of the house, Anna asked Arthur to wait outside for a while, and went to the room to get a bunch of children's toys, similar to a doctor's set for Arthur, my god. Muggles use this thing to listen to their heartbeats. Maybe even open people with a knife. Arthur put a child's stethoscope on his ear, oh. Anna. Thank you so much. I didn't know muggles were so magical in medicine. Arthur picked up a yo-yo, what about this? Wow. Anna demonstrated the cool gameplay of the yo-yo, and the flashing yo-yo obviously caught Weasley's attention. The two stood on the street in front of the house. It was like two children sharing toys, one proudly shared, the other joined in cooperation, exclaiming from time to time. 
I have to say that Anna felt that Weasley's unabashed appreciation for muggle objects really pleased her. He was a good person, and at the same time, he was easy to get along with. Anna tagged Arthur. The happy time of the two was interrupted by Lena. Lena, who had packed up A.I. when, kept urging Anna to rest as soon as possible, Anna. You haven't even taken off your coat. Mr. Arthur, these are for you. If you have any questions, you can write to me and ask me, I have to go to bed. Anna put a lot of toys in a toy box and handed them to Arthur. Thank you so much. Arthur couldn't take his eyes off the pile of toys. He rummaged for a while in the leather messenger bag he was carrying, and pulled out a pentagon-shaped, somewhat squashed cardboard box, and he was a little confused, oh, I only have this for you, this is Ron I the chocolate frog that my youngest son loves to eat, he is collecting the cards in it recently, that's good. I like it very much. Anna was more interested in moving chocolate frogs than toys, and being able to get rid of those toys that got in the way was exactly what Anna wanted. When she turned around, she found that Liana was standing at the door staring at her deathly. The beautiful Liana pointed to her wrist, and the hour hand of the delicate watch had already pointed to twelve o'clock. Oh, beautiful Lena, the nightlife has just begun. Of course Anna didn't dare to tell Lena like this, after all, she was only a teen-year-old girl. Goodbye Mr. Arthur, thank you for taking me to St. Mungo's, and thank you for the chocolate frog. It's all right, all right. Arthur looked funny holding a toy box, he waved vigorously, goodbye Anna. When Anna was about to enter the door, Arthur stopped her again. He seemed to be in a hurry, and he probably put the toy box on the car quickly, Anna. Do you know a boy named Harry Potter? Anna put her hand on the door frame, pretending to think, I don't know, who is that? Arthur was a little excited, that's a famous boy. Oh, maybe it's just in our magic world. He defeated a big devil. Really? I really want to know him. Anna was very cooperative, but she knew very well in her heart that Potter, a famous wizard in the wizarding world, was just a little boy abused at his muggle aunt's house. You'll have a chance to meet, Potter lives nearby, I think. Arthur whispered for a while, Number 4, Privet Drive. That's right. That's right. Arthur took a few steps backwards, back off next to the Blue Ford. Starting the Pumpkin Series missions, the boy who survived, Privet Road in Ziawijan District, there is a boy who survived. He is very famous and not very famous. Maybe you want to know him? Mission Reward, Memory Plus 10, Unknown I believe you will become friends, goodbye Anna. Go and rest. Thank you again for your gift. Arthur waved to Anna while sitting in the car. From the door, Anna watched the car disappear at the end of the road. Literally, the car was really gone. Turning around, Anna bumped into Liana's arms. Anna. I know you must be very excited now, and there are many questions you want to ask me, but it's time for you to rest." Liana took off Anna's woolen coat and hung it on the hanger, patted Anna twice on the back to signal her going upstairs numbly, Anna could only obey, and the cat snow quietly followed through the gap between the handrails. After coming out of the bathroom to wash up, Anna obediently entered the room under the gaze of the beautiful Liana, and obediently got into the quilt, Good night mom. Anna obediently said good night to Lena. Good night dear. Lena gently kissed Anna's forehead. Sleeping is impossible. Anna, who has the soul of a young man in the 21st century, will never forget this not so good tradition of staying up late every day, even in the 20th century. Snacks, mobile phones, and happy water for the fat house. Although she had brushed her teeth, Anna still opened the box of chocolate frogs a flexible frog jumped out of it and fell onto the sheet, Anna quickly caught it, fortunately, this kind of chocolate frog can only jump once. It was slippery in his hand, and it didn't look like a chocolate at all. Snow the cat stared at Anna and the chocolate frog with big eyes. Finally, Anna still took the sip. Hey! Not bad! The chocolate frog, which is slippery in the hand 
melts after being put into the mouth, and a mellow chocolate fragrance blooms between the lips and teeth. Anna picked up the card in the box Invincible Andres. Anna flips the card Andres, a great mage in classical Greece. Andres well-known magical abilities, great at the patroness charm, able to cast the patroness charm without a staff, his patroness is said to be the size of a giant, but its shape is unknown. In recognition of his magical abilities, he received the title Invincible Andres. The patron saint as big as a giant, my god, is he a Spartan mage? Brutal enough for my liking. Anna put the card on the bedside table. There is no smartphone, so Anna turns on the system as an alternative. The style of the system is very simple, there are only four sections that can be expanded, physics, magic, tasks and others. Physics includes memory, reflexes, and physique, while magic includes ventriloquism and magic control. Anna frowned as she watched the opening of her physics column memory, Mahime, response, weak, physique, weak and unbearable, skills, non-magic Chinese alavel, English alavel, piano alavel, cooking blevel, healthcare blevel, dance clevel, mouth gun clevel, French level. The skills are quite satisfying. The reflexes and physique can't be too harsh for a teenage-year-old body, but this memory is really. Anna looked at the magic section again ventilator, ABBA ABBA MANA control precision, zero skill, magic superconductivity Anna's brows wrinkled again and again, ABBA ABBA? Isn't this not even clear? What is this superconductivity? With a thought, the superconducting skill showed an introduction, the magic power used for channeling is huge, and the magic spell is extremely powerful. The disadvantage is that if the magic power control accuracy is low, it is difficult to control the magic spell effect. This should be one of the benefits brought by time travel. This body has been violently violent before. Anna guessed that it should be the time when the little girl was raped on campus in the United States. At that time, the little girl became a squib, and Anna's arrival again fixed the magic of this body so that the body can now use a lot of magic power even the magic power of magic riot is normal. But not being able to control it is a problem. Sometimes the magic power is too strong or too weak, it will be a bad thing. Anna rubbed her eyes and opened the other section, maps, memos it's really clear at a glance. I don't have a good memory, so I tried to get it together, so I don't have to worry about getting lost and taking exams in the future. The task panel is even simpler, showing scanned tasks and discovered tasks. Anna found that scanning the task does not mean accepting the task, similar to the difference between seeing a melon and eating a melon. Scanning only means that this person has melons. If you want to do tasks and eat melons, you must develop contact with him. And different melons seem to be different kinds of quests, the copper melon is a short-term quest like helping Neville find grandma while the golden melon shows a series of quests. Anna, who was ready to eat melons for a long time, pulled the quilt, causing the cat snow to step on Anna's stomach. Anna suddenly thought that the cat snow didn't wash his feet when he came back from a walk, but there was nothing to do about it. Anna didn't have the strength to entangle her, so she closed her eyes and fell asleep. The moonlight shone lightly on the roof of the bungalow at number 4 Privet Road through the clouds, and the brown tiles reflected a beautiful light. The Disleys and their sons, who lived on the second floor, purred unevenly, forming a gorgeous duet. At this time, eight-year-old Harry Potter had already fallen asleep in the locked storage room. He never imagined that his tragic childhood would begin to change in 24 hours. Anna opened her eyes at six o'clock. After confirming that the system does exist, and magic is no longer something that exists in fantasy, Anna ran downstairs with joy. There was Liana's busy voice from the kitchen, A.I. Wen was carried to the sofa, and was dozing off on his stomach. The morning news from the community came on the TV there were frequent wildcat activities in Ziawijan district. Snow K really needs to pay attention. Anna, are you awake? Come and have breakfast. Lena put the prepared sandwich on the table then took another plate and added fried eggs on it. Mom! 
Do I really have a wizard great-grandfather? Anna asked inarticulately after taking a bite of the sandwich. The beauty Lena handed Anna a glass of milk, pulled out the chair in front of Anna and sat down. My grandfather, Boren Galliard, he was indeed a wizard, but when he found out that his son, my father without any magic power, he gradually lost contact with the magic world, and until I was born, he almost completely integrated into the world of ordinary people. Liana got up, took out an album from the bookshelf, opened it and pointed to a photo, this is when I was three years old, and the person holding me is your great-grandfather. With a circle of milk stains on her mouth, Anna stared at the photo carefully. It was a kind-looking old man in a suit, holding a cane, with a smile on his face, while the little girl he was holding pointed angrily at the camera. Lina smiled and said, I definitely didn't like taking pictures at that time. What about my great-grandmother? I haven't seen her, but when I asked once, my grandfather told me she was a brave woman who, though not magic, protected her child in a car accident I guess she died to protect my father. When it comes to her father, Lena is a little anxious. My father was so happy when he found out that I didn't have magic. I think he completely ignored my grandfather's mood. Lena picked up Anna's empty plate, he has been a man who seeks normal and scoffs at all magic. Lena added, I think it's probably a form of jealousy. Anna shrugged, not good at evaluating her grandfather, but she agreed with it in her heart. It's like Mrs. Petunia, jealous of her magical sister, hating magic and hating Potter. Great-grandfather is completely integrated into the world of ordinary people. Snow the cat jumped onto Anna's lap and found a comfortable place to lie down. Almost, except for a few complaints in front of me who was interested in magic, he seemed to have lost interest in magic. Lina took out A.I. Wen's milk bottle and handed it to A.I. Wen who was still stupefied after being awakened, he has always been full of guilt for his wife and son because he should have been in the car on the day of the car accident, but he was temporarily in the car with the wizard. My friends went for a drink together. I can't forget that one time my father yelled at my grandfather, stop playing with your magic, no amount of power can save my mother. A magic shop, but you can't easily throw away your magic. The pumpkin mission, every family has a heart oread scripture Anna was full of thoughts, but she didn't expect to have so many melons in her family, and even started a series of missions of Harry Potter-level gourds. By the way, Lena searched in a small treasure box on the fireplace and took out a key, this is something your great-grandfather left me. Before I went to study in America, he told me that he wanted to go to France to meet an old friend. That was the last time I saw him. He disappeared, I missed my wedding, and I couldn't see your birth. After so many years, I have always missed him. Anna took the key. It was a small golden key with a strange symbol engraved on it. Every family has a heart oread scripture key, you inherited Bolan Galliard's key from Lena. Can you use it to open the Gringotts vault and gradually resolve decades of family tensions? Rewards, Reaction plus 5, Memory plus 10, Unknown Gringotts. Bolin left all his property to his granddaughter, but now it seems that his great-granddaughter should inherit it. Looking at the time, it's only after 7 o'clock. Most shops in the UK open at 9 or 10. I can't guarantee whether the leaky cauldron will be open all night. Anna plans to pack up before going out.